Mrs. Brown, it will be no trouble at all. I'll be glad to sit with Tommy while you and Mr. Brown go out. No, I have nothing to do tonight. All right, I'll be there at 8. Goodbye. Pat, pardon me, but what do you mean you have nothing to do tonight? Have you forgotten that we have a date to watch the wrestling workouts tonight? <laughs> well, how could you forget a thing like that? We were going to go to dinner, watch the workouts, then go back to your place for a late snack. I forgot all about it. Oh, huh, fine. Thanks. But I can't let Mr. and Mrs. Brown down. They can't get their regular babysitter, and, well, they've already made their plans to go out tonight. Oh, great. Why don't you take Freddy? I borrowed the money from him to take you out. I don't want to spend it on him. <laughs> Sorry, Mickey. I, I can't see how I can possibly get out of babysitting tonight. Well, there is a way. I'll just go into Mr. Brown and say you can't possibly babysit, that's all. Now, Mickey... He'll understand our side of it. I'll just say, Mr. Brown, I'm very sorry to inform you, but Pat cannot possibly babysit with your son this evening. After all, our date has priority over babysitting. And so, therefore, Mr. Brown... Yes, Mulligan? <laughs> you were saying, Mulligan... Pat will be only too happy to babysit for you this evening, Mr. Brown, sir. Hey, Pat. Look who dropped in. Hello, Hello Pat. How are you, Mrs. Brown? Why, Michael, it's almost psychic that you should show up like this. Is it? Well, I, I knew that Pat would have to sit with Tommy tonight, so I didn't think it would hurt anything if I came over and we had our date here. Oh, I'm sorry we interfered with your plans. Oh, it's quite all right. I was just going to take her to Ciro's anyway. Ciro's? Mm hmm I wish Charles would take me to Ciro's. Well, evidently, I can't afford some of the places that Mulligan can. You can't afford Sam Ciro's malt shop? Sam Ciro's? Sure, S-Y-R-O-S, Ciro's. Makes the thickest malts in town. In fact, I, I almost chipped a tooth on one of them last week. <laughs> Here I am, Mother. Oh, hi, Mickey. Hi, Mulligan. Glad to see you here. For a minute, I thought I was gonna be a pretty dull evening. Ouch. Tommy, you behave and you do as Pat says. Good night, dear. The top of my head. I don't want lipstick on my face. <laughs> oh, you woman hater. Good night, son. Come on, Alice. Let's get this over with. Oh, Charles, stop grumbling. It's strange the way he never wants to go out, but when we get there, he never wants to come home. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Brown. Good night, Mr. Brown. We'll be home early. Fine. Have a nice time now. S Y R O S. Well, there goes your race. Well, what do you feel like doing, Tommy? First, I'd like to see what's inside that box. Oh, now you just never mind about the box, Tommy. After all, I, I brought this for Pat. Oh, Mickey, how sweet. <laughs> I bet I know what's inside. I'll bet you don't. My favorite chocolate. No. My favorite mint. No. My favorite toffee. No. Guess again. Stop guessing and just see for yourself. Well, I don't care what kind of candy it is, as long as it isn't jumbo caramel. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's try one. Yeah, go ahead. Well, Pat, have a piece. You'll find they're delicious. Mmm. He's all right. You know, no parents should be without one of these things. Let me see. I only hope he doesn't tell us P-A-R-E-N-T-S. Yes, that would be very E-M-B-A-R-R. 
M-B-A-R. Or, uh, that would be B-A-D. Hey, uh, don't put that in your mouth again. Uh, uh, Tommy, no, that wouldn't be very bright. <laughs> I'm brighter than you. I can spell embarrassing. E-M-B-A-R-R-A-S-S-I-N-G. Embarrassing. <laughs> At least I don't have to have a babysitter. Come <laughs> on, oh, now, both of you go to a neutral corner. Would you like to watch television? There'll be no TV tonight. The set's out of order. Oh, no. Yes. My father tried to fix it this afternoon. <laughs> Up until then, it worked okay. Gosh, no television. What are we going to do? Oh, there are plenty of other things to do besides looking at television. I know what they did before TV. They read books. That's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to read you a book. What kind of books do you like? I like the encyclopedia. What? Yeah, when I put it on the chair, it brings me up even with the TV screen. Oh, we've got a nice set of Robert Louis Stevenson. What? <laughs> Daddy likes to impress people. Sorry. Nicky, try the shelf above. Those are children's books. Yes, let's see what this is. Oh, Mother Goose for the Modern Child. Oh, that's a book my mother bought for me three years ago. I didn't go for it too much. I don't understand that. You know, when I was a child, Pat... Mother Goose was my favorite book. Oh, look, Mickey, there's Little Miss Muffet. Remember oh, that? Of course, of course. Little Miss Muffet sat on her tuffet, eating oatmeal and cream. When... <laughs> oatmeal and cream? Wasn't it supposed to be uh, eating her curds and whey? I think so. You mean they changed the plot? Well, somebody must have. Mother Goose for the Modern Child by Miss Olivier Purdy. Good evening. Back so soon? Yeah. Their television set was broken. We couldn't think of anything to do. So we came home. You and Mickey might as well run along now, Pat. Uh, first, I'd like to ask a question. Whatever happened to Curds and Whey? Oh, you're reading Mother Goose for the Modern Child. It's a wonderful book. What's wrong with this television set? It's out of order, Daddy. What do you mean, out of order? I fixed it today. Yeah, but good. <laughs> Hasn't the book been changed a bit? It certainly has been changed. Miss Purdy has rewritten the old bloodthirsty fairy tales and removed all the objectionable elements. It's about time someone did something about the fairy tales. Now, in the case of little Miss Muffet, who was sitting on her tuffet eating oatmeal and cream, whatever happened to curds and whey? Oh, Miss Purdy feels, and I agree with her, the curds and whey contain no vitamins and are full of starch. No. We want to develop good eating habits in the child. Now, let me read the rest of it. Mm-hmm. Along came a butterfly and sat down beside her. A what? Butterfly. Along came a spider and sat down beside her and frightened Miss Muffet away. Period. Gee, that reminds me. Tomorrow I gotta go catch a few to feed to my pet snake. <laughs> you know what I think? I think this is a lot of nonsense. Mother Goose was good enough for us. It's good enough for our children. Miss Purdy had a lot of nerve tampering with it. In my opinion, <laughs> she showed up well enough to win. <laughs> Charles, what's wrong? Well, what do you know? My favorite inlay. We're on sale. Hey, Mick. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Brown. Imagine finding you here. We just thought we'd drop in for a visit with our son. I hope we're not interfering with anything. Oh, sit down, Freddie. We're happy to have you. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Brown. Hey, Mick, I brought the rest of the candy. Didn't want us to run out. Try one, sir. They're delicious. No, thank you. I just enjoyed one. <laughs> Say, I never saw one with gold in it before. <laughs> Freddie, we're having a very interesting discussion. I'd like to know how you feel about modernizing fairy tales. Oh, I go for that. Got to keep abreast with the times. Now, take Jack the Giant Killer. Mrs. Purdy says... Jack the Giant Killer is my favorite fairy tale. Anyone who touches a word of that will have to answer to me. Now, Charles, don't be stubborn. I agree with Mrs. Brown. Take Mother Goose's version of Jack the Giant Killer. It's all one-sided. Traitor. Let's face it, Mr. Brown. Everybody's heard Jack's side of the story. Don't you think we should hear the giant side? What do you mean, Mickey? Well, children all over the world have heard about Jack the Giant Killer. It's about time somebody told the giant side of the story. Go ahead, Mickey. Tell us. As if anybody could stop him. Once upon a time, long, long ago, lived a kindly, handsome, lovable giant named Willie, 
who lived in a 30-room castle in the high rent district. His dearest possessions were his hen that laid the golden eggs, his magic harp that played by itself, and his adoring wife. In that order. He would have been perfectly happy except for the fact that one of his neighbors had a boy, Jack, who was a mischievous little prankster. The kid drove him crazy, in fact. It got so bad that Willie had to sneak into his own castle to avoid stepping into one of Jack's booby traps. <laughs> Mrs. Giant was a wonderful wife. She kept everything in apple pie order except the apple pie. She just couldn't make a good one. But she was beautiful. Four grains past five. What on earth is keeping Willie? Oh, here comes Lamekins now. Wait a minute. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Oh, Willie, that's just the sauerkraut I'm cooking for dinner. Sauerkraut? Wait a minute, that doesn't rhyme with fee, fi, fo, fum. You must be tired, dear. Get down and relax. Yes, I will relax. Down, Pevnisher. But how can I try and relax with that boy Jack in the neighborhood? I don't know what he's going to do to me next. Call for me at 9 in the morning, will you, please? Yes. Thank you. Oh, gosh, it's good to be home. One thing you can be thankful for, you don't have to be a giant here. In your own home, you can be as small as you want. Say, dear, have you seen Jack at all today? Well, no, I haven't, Willie. Neither have I. You know what? Maybe he's going to leave me alone after all. Maybe he's decided not to try and steal my harp or my hen that lays the golden eggs. Oh, well, wait a minute. What's this? What's what? Oh, no. Beware. Jack. Oh, that kid is after me again. Ever since we moved into this neighborhood, he's made my life a nightmare. Oh, he might be hiding in this very room right now. Oh, now, Willie, calm down. You get jumpy like this every time you come home on the freeway. Let me get you a food. Yes, sir. I know that boy Jackie's after me. Gosh, I thought when I made a deal with him to give him one egg a week that he'd leave me alone. But now he not only wants the egg, he wants my hand and he wants my harp, too. Now, there's no possible way that Jack can get into this room. I wouldn't trust it. Thief, I fall from. It's I... the incinerator. Hmm? Oh, sorry. Ah, little boy Blue. Why did his folks have to give him that horn? Maybe Jack would leave me alone if I moved out of this neighborhood, huh? Now forget about that boy. Willie, would you like some oatmeal and cream? No, no, no. That's the wrong thing to feed me. You know I like curds and whey. Well, all right, but it's so starchy. Oh, Willie, I have a juicy bit of gossip about Cinderella. You do? Do you know what time she came home from the ball last No, tell me, tell me, tell me. A quarter after 12. <gasps> Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. You know, maybe if I gave Jack two eggs a week, he'd leave me alone. But you know, there's something I can't figure about, Cindy. She left for the ball in a custom-built convertible and came home in a pumpkin. Oh, Cindy, she's all right. It's just that rich fairy godmother of hers tossing around those wishes like that. Willie, what are you doing? It's only the doorbell. <gasps> it's Jack. I know it's Jack. Nonsense. It's probably Mother Hubbard come for a bone again. I'll go down to the door and see. All right, dear. Psst. Oh, hello. Do you live here? Uh, no, I live next door. Uh, what are you selling, shoes? Well, not exactly. My name is Prince Charming. Prince Char... <laughs> Prince Charming? How corny can you get? Well, I'm sorry you feel that way, but it happens to be my name. I'm looking for the girl whose foot fits this glass slipper. And when I find her, she'll win a prize. Yeah? What's the prize? Me. Oh, brother. And who might you be? I'm Jack. Oh, yes, Jack Spratt could eat no fat. Oh, no, 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 just Jack. Jack be nibble, Jack be quick. No, 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 just Jack. You mean, uh, Jack and Jill went up the hill hey, to fetch a... call me Tom. Why, of course, Tom, Tom, the Piper's Jack, son. period. Hey, look, uh, these people are very particular who they let in the castle. Since I'm a very good friend of the family, suppose you give me the slipper and I'll take it in and test it for you. Why, thank you, Jack. Say, uh, you'd better be careful about jumping over those candlesticks. Huh? You may be nimble, but sometime you might not be quick enough. <laughs> I hope they don't recognize me. All I want to do is get my hands on the hen and that magic harp. Who is it? Uh, it's me, Prince Charming. 
Open up the door. I have a wonderful bargain for you. It's such a lovely glass slipper. I wish you had it my size. Would you mind if I tried it on again? Oh, not at all. Oh, thank you. Madame. Are you? Oh, Willie, this is Prince Charming. Uh, <clears throat> good afternoon, Mr. Willie. I've seen this fellow someplace before. If you were wearing glasses and didn't have that mustache, I'd swear <clears throat> that you were... <clears throat> Steady now. Let's see if we can get this to fit. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell... Lilac hair tonic. <laughs> Must be catching a cold. I haven't smelled the blood of an Englishman all day. Uh, there now. How does that feel? Well, it's a little snug, but... I like the style. Well, we can order you a larger pair. Do you have it in Navy? Oh, yes. We have it in Navy, Army, Air Corps, and Seabee. Oh, Prince, you've been so charming. Would you like to stay for a cup of tea with us? Well, I'd prefer a chocolate malt, but tea will be fine. Fine. I'll put a pot on right now. Willie, why don't you show Prince Charming around the castle? Of course, dear. Of course. So, you're a giant, eh? Well, I've been in the giant business now for 20 years. Studied under one of the greatest giants of all time. Lippy de Rocher. I always thought the giants were, uh, big? Bigger. Yeah. Well, you see, uh, undoubtedly, you've gotten that idea from CinemaScope. The movies make everything look big. Well, tell me, is being a giant very hard work? Hard work? I never have a moment to myself. Last week, I was on What's My Line. The week before that, I was on Ted Mack's original Amateur Hour with my harp. We came in a close second to a fellow who played his kazoo underwater. <laughs> I've uh, heard quite a lot about your magic harp. Can I see it? Why, oh, certainly. It's right over here. Oh, boy, that's a beauty. Does it really play by itself? Anything you'd like to hear. What selection do you want? Well, uh, I prefer jazz. Right up the harp's alley. Listen. Harp. One, two. Oh, but man, that's the coolest. That's crazy, Daddy. Go, 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 go. <laughs> do it. Simple. It just makes every third bar. I can't believe it. Very what? Embarrassing. E-M-B-A-R-R. -R. <laughs> anyway, a few years ago, I tried to take harp lessons, but the harp learned faster than I did, and now the harp doesn't need me anymore. Can you play any other instruments? No, but the harp can. Play saxophone and piano. You don't say. Yes. What was that? The hen that lays golden eggs. You're kidding. Kidding? I'll show you. Fort Knox, he thinks that you're kidding. Show him what you can do. 24 karat gold. Maroon. Yeah. yeah. And that's not half what you can do. Fort Knox, show him what you can do when you put your heart into it. <laughs> there we are. Gold bracelet. <laughs> and now, I'd like to show you a beautiful view of our city. This would be a beautiful neighborhood if only that little monster Jack didn't live here. There's so much room in the world. Why did he have to be right next door to me? It was Jack! Oh. I come back with my hand! <laughs> so Jack stole the hen that laid the golden eggs. Those are the best kind. For all of you out there who have hens that lay golden eggs, you know what a terrible tragedy this was for Willie the Giant. You see, the hen was more than a pet. It was an annuity. Poor Willie was miserable. He couldn't eat or sleep or watch television for two days. And with no more golden eggs coming in, he couldn't pay his bills. So they shut off his lights, they shut off his gas, and they shut off his Fiddler's Three. <laughs> we used to be such a happy family. You, me... The harp and the hen. Now the hen is gone. All because that Jackie tricked me. But he won't do it again, I promise. That's enough harp. Take five. <laughs> Nobody will ever sneak into this castle again. Are all the doors bolted? Yes, and the drawbridge is up. The only way Jack can possibly get into the castle is climb 200 feet of stone wall. I still don't feel safe. <laughs> what was that? It sounds like little Bo Peep is in town. Oh, my dear. 
she has her nerve hurting her sheep across our lawn. Bo Peep, get your sheep off of our lawn, please. There's Jack. What is he doing down there? Well, he's not doing any harm. He seems to be planting something. Oh, I guess he feels bad about stealing our hen and he's landscaping our yard. I guess he can't cause any trouble down there. Come on, dear. I will, dear, I will. I'm so tired, I haven't slept in two days. But now that I know that Jack is out there, I'll, I'll be able to rest better now. Yes. Sleep, darling. Sleep, darling. Sleep, darling. I will, I will. You quit yelling in my ear. It's all right. happy because he got his heart back. Mrs. Giant was happy because she collected his insurance. But unfortunately for Jack, Fort Knox was so unhappy over the loss of his master that he didn't lay any more golden eggs. Just IOUs. That's the end of my story. You'll have to admit it's much better than the original version. Hey, why is everybody asleep? I'm not asleep. The set's not supposed to be working. Mr. Brown, wake up, please. Mrs. Brown, uh, Pat Freddy. Mulligan, Mulligan, will you keep it a little quiet? People are trying to sleep. But you don't realize what you've done. Send me a memo in the morning. But you've missed the most interesting part of the story. Oh, uh, it couldn't have been half as exciting as the dream I was having before I was so rudely interrupted. Well, if you'll tell me where you all went to sleep, I'll pick it up from that point and start the story over again. Mickey, you should have seen the dream I just had. It was about the giant, but he was a good giant. And Jack was a bad boy who stole a magic heart and a hen. But that was the story I was telling you about. Oh, no, Mickey. This is what I dreamed. This wasn't a big giant, but a small giant. And it looked just like you. You didn't dream it. I told you about it. And Prince Charming looked just like Daddy. And your wife looked like Pat. And the bad boy Jack looked just like Freddy. <laughs> Oh, and that was the good word from the sponsor who will bring you our show next week. We hope that you enjoyed our little fairy tale. We've done our best to make it authentic as possible. <laughs> Oh, and friends, you probably think that these eggs were painted to look like 20 karat gold eggs. Well, I can prove to you that they are genuine... Uh... <laughs> Live and learn, I 
Oh, I'm sorry. Good night, folks.